Welcome back to the placement system series. In this video, we're gonna be getting some basic interpolation going. So we actually have a better visual placement system. And then we're also gonna be getting the activation functions or not the activation, but the approve functions. Before that, here's the self advertisement part. If you wanna skip it, go ahead. But if you're enjoying the series, consider hitting the like button and giving the channel a subscribe. And then also, if you are having questions about any development issue, or you just wanna be involved in the community, uh, the link to the Discord server will be in the description. So anyway, without further ado, let's just get right into the video on how to make a placement system on Roblox. Okay, so we're gonna start off with interpolation. Let's just get right into this. So we're gonna declare a variable for the speed and we're gonna default it at one. Now you may be saying, well, we already have a lerp speed variable up here. But if we were to sort of, actually I'm gonna rename this to lerp level since it's more of a lerp level variable. If we were to set this to one or whatever, then this is gonna be instantly snapping. So the lerp level should be the interpolation level. And we don't want this to be one as in instantly snapping. You might as well just turn this off then. So what I want is for, if you were to set this to 0 0.7, it to be kind of more smooth than not. So we want zero to equal instant snapping, whereas one is gonna equal no movement at all. Now, the reason why it's not gonna equal, or one is gonna equal no movement is because when you're equal to a one, that means that it's gonna be so slow, it's basically not moving at all because of how slow it is. And actually, I don't think it moves at all. So anyway, we want to actually take this value and make this true. So to do that, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually in here in the translate obj function, we're gonna just make the lerping happen. So what we can do is we can say object.primarypart.cframe and then there's actually a built-in function to cframe called lerp. Okay, so once you've called this function, there's one more parameter. So the, there's actually two parameters to lerp. So right after you do call cframe.new and input the position variables, we can then give it the speed. So pretty simple. And this will actually give you an interpolated movement if the speed is input correctly. Now, how does this work? Well, let's, let's take a look at this. So we're gonna use the pivot to method to actually set that position. Then we're gonna say the current position is going to interpolate to our new position based on the speed. So the speed will determine how fast that happens. Okay, so then down here, we can actually do uh, a couple of things. So we need to create a, well, I'm just gonna do a comment just to know what's happening here. So make sure you're doing these comments. So sets up interpolation, whoops, interpolation. Interpolations speed, I guess, will work. Then I'm gonna just declare a variable called pre-speed, which is gonna be defaulted at one. And I'll explain what's happening in a minute. So then we're gonna say if interpolation is true, then pre-speed is gonna equal, well, from, for now, I'm just gonna say 0 0.7, but actually it'll be 0 0.3, not 0 0.7, but we'll actually get this automated in a minute. Then we're gonna set speed to one. And then after we set the parent, we are gonna say wait, and then speed equals pre-speed. Okay, so what's happening here? Well, first off, let's just make sure this actually works. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, it's actually working very well. So, we have some smooth movement, movement, but why am I doing this? Well, what if I turned this off? What if I just did, if I said speed equals pre-speed now, and then what would happen? If you don't catch it, it's very subtle, but sometimes, well, it's sometimes very subtle. Okay, so if you didn't catch it, I'll explain. If you did, congratulations. Anyway, the reason is, if you notice, there was actually a bit of a glide. So the object sort of glided towards the mouse position. So say my mouse was over here and the object in the workspace 
um, starts off over here because that's just you know where the object is. So it has to glide or it has to go all the way over to here. Now you kind of want that to be instant, but in the case of this, we actually set our speed to the pre-speed immediately after. And since this function is getting called whenever you know bind to render step does, then every single frame after you call this is going to start setting that position. Okay, so how do we fix this? Well, all we can do is we can just default this at one. Whoops, speed equals one. And then this should fix it. So what's the difference? Well, we're not setting it to the pre-speed immediately. We're waiting for the object to be in the workspace. And then we're going to even wait uh, one wait frame or whatever. I can't remember how long this is. It's very, very short. But then we will have enough time to wait and then set the speed to the pre-speed after the object has already been parented to placed objects. Okay, so that's that. Let's just make sure this works again. Okay, and it looks like it is. Now, time to automate this. So, 0 0.3 is the value we're targeting. So, because the reason why is actually in lerp, the lower the value, the more lerp it's going to be. But we want the user to be have a higher value as a higher lerp level. So what we can do is we can then, there's going to be a little bit of a longer line and I'll explain why we're doing everything, but let's just, let's just do this. So we're going to say math.clamp. Okay. And then we can say math.abs to number and then one minus lerp level. Okay. And then of course we're also going to need to say zero and then 0 0.9 and Again, I'll explain why we're doing this. So math.clamp is just going to clamp it between a value. So then we can't go higher than one or lower than one. And if you notice, we're actually not going from zero to one. We're going from zero to 0 0.9. And that's because if you have interpolation on, you probably don't need this to be a one since that'll be instant snapping. So you don't have to do this. You can just set this to one, but it's better in my opinion, to just have it clamped to 0 0.9. And then if they, if you turn interpolation off, then speed can just always be uh, one. Okay, so now why are we doing the absolute value? Well, let's go up here. Since this is a variable declared in the script, someone could technically just come in here and just do something like that, right? Like they can do whatever they want to that value. And technically they could come down here and remove this as well. But if you just do this, it makes it just a little bit more so that if someone doesn't really know what they're doing, if, I mean, this is kind of what I do in my placement module since people can do whatever they want and it's easy enough just to add this feature in rather than having people complain about it. Then the reason why I'm converting it to a number is again, you don't know if someone can come in here and just do that. And then boom, it's no longer a number and your script is going to error. Okay, so what is one minus lerp level? Well, let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so we have one minus and then 0 0.7, which is gonna equal 0 0.3. Then we have one minus 0 0.3, and we're gonna get 0 0.7. Now, as you can see, these are both sort of give the inverse value, but what this is saying is it's basically giving us exactly what we want. So if we start at our max value and subtract sort of the change or the, I don't know, not the change, but the current, the lerp level, then we're going to be swapping sort of what this is. So 1 minus 0 0.7 is going to be 0 0.3. So, and then again, 0 or 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. And then 0 minus 1, or 1 minus 0, is going to be 1. So you can see that we're kind of getting the value that we want. So if we wanted, if we wanted this to be 0 0.8, then the actual value we'd want to input into speed here would be 0 0.2. And let's just calculate that out. So 1 minus 0 0.8 equals 0 0.2. So that's the reason why we're doing that. We're sort of taking the starting point 
and then subtracting the value that we had to sort of swap it for here. So then this is gonna be the value that we would have wanted to input up here. So that's basically that. Okay, so now interpolation should work if I just hit play. Let's just make sure that I did all of this right. Okay, and it seems to work fine. So now we can get on to the approve placement function. We're actually going to need to do another function. We're going to call verify plane. And this again is going to be a part of this function, which will then determine if we can return true or false. Okay, so for approve placement, all we're going to do is say that if not verify plane, then we're just going to warn to the console something. I'll, and then we're obviously going to return false. Once we know what this function does, then this will become easier to fill in. But for now, we're just going to go on to the next if statement. Next, we're going to say that if grid size is greater than math.min, plot.size.x, and then plot.size.z. Then we are going to error that the grid size is larger than the plot on at least one axis. And the same thing, we're going to return false. Then if everything else goes, if everything goes right though, then we can just return true like we hope that we will be. Now, what is going on here? Well, math.minimum returns the minimum value of a set of inputs. So if we give it the size on the X and on the Z, then if the grid size is greater than the minimum value of that, the grid size is gonna be larger than the plot overall. So obviously it's gonna be very unlikely that someone's gonna set their grid size to something larger than their plot, but you never know. Um, anyway, next on to verify plane. What is this function going to do? And actually we can do a comment to say confirms that the settings are valid for placement. Okay. And what is verify plane going to do? Well, verify plane is just going to check if the model will snap evenly on the plot. There we go. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, we are just going to return. This is actually just going to be a one line function. We're going to return that plot.size.x mod or modulus grid size is equal to zero. And then we're going to do the same thing for the Z. So if I just copy and paste this line here, change it to that, uh, then this should just work. And so now what we can do is instead of erroring that the grid size is larger, we can just warn to the console that the model cannot snap on the plot. Please change the plot size to fix this. Okay. So what's happening here? So again, we're all we're saying is that we're going to take the plot size on both coordinates and divide it by the grid size and all modulus does is it does the division but only gives us the remainder so if the remainder is equal to zero then we have no issues because our grid size has to evenly divide into it otherwise there's going to be an offset that we don't want so if we get a remainder of zero then we know that everything will work fine and we have to do this for both axes so if this returns true then we're going to return that value however if it's not true then if both of these are not true, then it's going to return false, and this will happen. And okay, so then this should actually work. All right. So as you can see, there were no issues, but say we change our grid size to something massive. Like, say we change grid size to something, oh, I forgot that's in the local script. If we change it to like 200 or something, yeah, as you can see, 
Uh, the model cannot snap on the plot. Please change the plot size. Oh, okay. Did we get a wrong value? Okay, so basically this will only uh, fire if, or only will run if this happens to be true as well. So if the grid size will evenly divide into it. So let's actually do that. Actually, what we can do uh, instead, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do is equal to the minimum. We'll just say is too close to the size of the plot on at least one axis. There we go. So that kind of fixes this where it's equal to. So then what we can do is we can actually set it to 156. So, or yeah, 156, I think it was instead of 200. So there we go. Hit play. And as you can see, we get an error of grid size is too close to the size of the plot on at least one axis. Change it back to two. Then it should work just fine. Okay. So that is that. Let's just go over the code one more time like I usually do, and then we'll end the tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to look at is obviously we've declared a couple more variables. We want to create an interpolation system where zero is equal to instant snapping and one is equal to no movement at all or high interpolation. So then what we can do is we can then call the lerp function on the current C frame of the model and kind of lerp it towards the current position that we want to be at corresponding to the speed value which is calculated down here so we have to get the pre-speed variable which actually is probably better written as temp speed so I'm just gonna actually rewrite this as temp speed to get a better naming naming convention so rename this to temp speed because that's really what it is then so temp speed is equal to one and then interpolation if we have interpolation on, we're going to set temp speed equal to the value we want to set speed to, which is going to be this long mess of functions being called. Then we're going to set speed to 1 if it isn't already 1. And if it is, we're going to make sure it's 1. Then after that, we can just wait one uh, wait cycle after the object has parented to the placed object's location and set the speed then equal to the temp speed which will be the speed for the rest of the placement. Okay, so then before we do that, obviously we need to make sure that our approved or our placement is approved. So what we can do is we can come up here and obviously we see that we have if not verified plane. To verify plane, just make sure that the grid size can evenly snap on the plot. Then if it isn't though, we're gonna warn to the console and return false. And if that went through, but this uh, it doesn't. So if the grid size is too close to the grid size or the size of the plot, I mean, if it's greater or equal to the minimum value of the plot on the X and or Z, then we're going to error to the console and return false. Although I don't know if we need to return false because this error will just stop the script from running. However, if all else, if these things return false, then, or if these things are not true, then we're going to return true and continue the activate function. Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like and hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, join the Discord server, link in the description, and I'll see you in the next video.